Hello everyone, this is registered dietitian Jason Hunter here with today's Nutrition Quickie. And got a little different backdrop today. Got a little lake in my background here. Instead of my uh, kids' uh, swing set that you probably normally see or the trampoline. So, give you something a little different to look at. Today we're going to talk about how do you stay motivated when that weight loss slows down or maybe even when it comes to a stop. Which tends to happen because... You know, when we lose weight, our body doesn't like to lose weight. It doesn't like to shed fat. It's kind of a, an alarm that goes off in our body, in our brain. So it really, it tries to shut it down. So when weight loss first comes off right away, water's coming off, inflammation's getting lower, you uh, have all the success, right? And you're real happy. And then all of a sudden, after a couple of weeks, it slows down, a lot of times dramatically. This is where we're getting into the true fat loss. And this is also where we're getting into the body not wanting to give up that weight. It's, it's a protection mechanism, right? It's hard to stay motivated when that happens. So today we're going to talk about seven ways to stay motivated when you kind of hit that little obstacle and have to really fight through it, fight through that plateau. The first one is, you know, creating a vision board. Creating that ideal body, you know, what does your body look like? What does it feel like? How do the clothes fit? You know, how do you look in the mirror? Creating that vision, you know, even writing it out on a board, like we've talked about, a vision board on a whiteboard. Get that clear picture of what you want to look like when this objective is over, when you've reached your goals, right? When this journey's uh, reached its end point. How does that really look? That's going to really motivate. That's a real big, powerful motivator because that now you have a vision in your head. You have what we could even call an avatar, right, of what you look like and what you're trying to achieve. And that's going to motivate you anytime you put food in your mouth, anytime you have to make a selection at a restaurant, anytime you don't want to go to the gym or don't want to go work out. Those are the types of things that are going to really keep you motivated because you have a clear picture of what you want to look like when this is all over. The second motivator is listing things out. And we talk about making goals and so forth, but you know, a goal of I want to lose 10 pounds, isn't, it's not going to cut it. That's too broad. You know, we need to add to that. We need to really put some motivation behind it. So I want to lose 10 pounds so that I can play with my kids without feeling winded. Or when my kids ride their bikes down the sidewalk, I can keep up with them jogging and we can both have a fun, enjoyable time while we're getting some exercise. Those are the types of goals or listing, what we talk about listing things out in detail because those are specific motivators. If your child always wants to say, let's go, I wanna ride my bike, can you go with me? And you're always getting tired or winded, right? That is specific goal. Those, instead of just saying I wanna lose 10 pounds. Now I wanna lose 10 pounds and be able to keep up with my child when they're riding their bike or their scooter or whatever it may be, right? So. List things out in a specific way so that you have specific outcomes, specific goals that you're trying to reach. The next five I'm gonna have you read at the link in this post. And there's one that's very powerful also. It's uh, number six, I believe, in the list. Go check it out. And you know these are the types of things that we need to think about when it comes to weight loss. We've, I've mentioned many times, you know, weight loss is not easy. If it was easy, everyone would be skinny and we could eat whatever we wanted and so forth. But a lot of times when we eat the foods that we're even supposed to, it's still difficult. Good example is after those first few weeks of shedding the water, shedding the inflammation, the pounds start to come off, now we get to the true fat loss. And th true fat loss takes longer. You just can't shed 10 pounds of true fat in three days. It just doesn't happen. There's way too much calories that have to be burned for that to happen. So it's more incremental. And the other five motivators are really hit home in regards to remembering that when you're doing that and using other methods like circumference measurements. How do my clothes fit? You know, even if the scale is not moving per se or not moving enough, but I had to go in another belt notch on my, or you know, on my belt, I had to go in another notch, I'm losing real fat. Who cares what the scale is saying? I'm getting skinnier. Those are the types of things you have to remember when you're hitting those plateaus and trying to fight through the, the weight loss doldrums and that slowness period that when a lot of people lose motivation and unfortunately sometimes give up. That's what we don't want. So hope you like today's Nutrition Quickie and 
If you do, please give it a share. If you have any questions or any motivators that you use to help staying on track, please leave them in the comments section below. I'd love to hear about them as well as share them with others so that they can uh, implement them into their lifestyle so that they can reach their goals easier. Again, this is Jason Hunter, and this was today's Nutrition Quickie.